Good evening, dear ladies. Let's bless Bezat Hashem that we will all have the schut to greet Mashiach Tzitkan Bachamim Boim Bimara Biyameinu Amin. Eliyahu Navi Eliyahu Tishvi Eliyahu Giladi Bimara Yavu Elenu Mashiach Ben David Eliyahu Navi Zachu Latov. And we will all have the schut to see the building of Beit HaMikdash Hashishi Bimara Biyameinu Amin. Ki ayin bayin yaru bishuv Adonai Tzion. Ata takum tarachem Tzion ki et lechanena kiva moed. Hashivenu Adonai Lecha Benashuv HaChadesh Amenu Kekedem. And we all have the schut to go to Eretz Yisrael on the, on the wings of eagle, and we all have part in Eretz Yisrael. B'shem Hashem Naseh V'Natzliach, En Od Milvado Hashem, Sfatai Tiftach, Uti Agit Yilatecha, and everything that we are doing is B'shem Kol Yisrael. B'ezrat Hashem, everything is Lelu Nishmat, all of the people that were murdered viciously by the terrorists. And it's uh, also uh, all of the soldiers and may Hashem revenge their blood and it's for healing for all of the wounded uh, mentally and physically among all of the sick people and it's also that Hashem will bring back all of our captured safely healthy mentally and physically and all of our soldiers so dear dear ladies we are on parashat vayigash and i'm reminding you that this friday erev shabbat this eve of shabbat is is uh, the tenth of tevet it's a fast it starts from 5:45 a.m uh, you can look at the calendars you can ask the rabbis in the shul and it ends at around 5.05, which means uh, we do the Kiddush and we go out of the fast. So, dear ladies, I'm, I would like to refer to a thing that we are now, it's time of troubles for the children of Israel. So it says in, in Shulchan Aruch, regarding Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, Hilchot Ta'anit laws concerning public fast uh, days. So we said that this is the tenth of Tevet, and this is the beginning of the fast that is uh, that are connected to the ruining of the temple in Jerusalem, in, in Jerusalem. And on the tenth of the Tevet, there was a siege over the walls of Jerusalem. King uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, he he made a siege over the walls of Jerusalem. So this is chapter 121, and we're going to Halacha 11, and it says over there, Mitzvah al kol adat Yisrael, that it's a mitzvah to every Jewish community, shal kol sara shelo tavo, that when they uh, have troubles, uh, God forbid, yit'anu uh, v'itpalelu al saratam b'fnei Hashem itbarach shmo, that we need to fast and, and we need to daven, we need to pray to Hashem, in order that Hashem will bestow His mercy upon us and save us from everything that is happening. And ve'im ein ha'et machsheret li'tanot, machsheret li'tanot, which means if it's not, it's a trouble time and we we can't fast now. Kegon anirdafim shenam rashem li'tanot. For example, if you are if we are fleeing and and we don't have time to fast because we need to be to, we need our strength. So that we should accept upon ourselves if if a person is fleeing, like what happened on uh, on the Shabbat of Simchat of Shmini Atzeret and Simchat Torah in Israel, if a person is fleeing and he accepts upon himself, Hashem, I'm going to fast this and this fast. I can't do it now, but but Bezat Hashem, this is what I'm, what I'm going to do. So, and it's considered like we, like this person that accepted upon himself, even though he's not fasting now, it's considered that he's fasting now. And, and I have, a, which means that when we accept upon ourselves a mitzvah, we immediately create an angel next to us. How do we know that? We go to Daniel the prophet. And in Daniel the prophet, it says like this, chapter 10, verse 12. It says over there, So the angel Gabriel, 
Gabriel is now come, speaking to Daniel the prophet. And he says, don't be afraid, Daniel, כי מן היום הראשון אשר נתת את לבך להבין ולהתענות לפני אלוקיך, he says, because from the first day that you set up your heart to understand and to fast before your God, and he couldn't fast at that time, but he set up in his heart to fast. So he says, from that day that you set up your heart to fast, לפני אלוקיך, נשמעו דבריך ואני באתי בדבריך. Your words were heard, uh, which means your, on, your prayer was answered, and I am coming in front of you, which means I was created by the mitzvah that you, that you accepted upon yourself. So we see from Daniel the prophet that once we accept a, a mitzvah upon ourselves, we create a big angel. We go to Parashat Baalotcha, and over there, and the Rambam also states it in Mishneh Torah L'Rambam, and it says, Baalotcha, Parashat Baalotcha, it says, V'chi tavo milchama b'artzechem, al atzar atzorer etchem, v'hereotem b'chatzotzot, which means if you, it's a time of trouble that you have the children of Israel. So, and the, the people are um, going against you, there's a, a war in the entrance. He says, you should blow the trumpet, you should blow the shofar, and you will be remembered in front of me, Hashem Elokechem, Hashem your God, and I will deliver you from all of your, from all of your enemies. So this is Mamash Mitzvah Taseh that we should blow the, uh, the, the shofar, we, we blow the trumpet and we shout to Hashem and we ask the, from Hashem to help us. Furthermore, Daniel the prophet in chapter, in chapter 9, uh, in chapter 9 verse, uh, chapter 9 is all the vidui, the confession that Daniel speaks to Hashem. And he says to Hashem, it starts, like this, fight palela la Hashem elokai, and I and I am praying to Hashem, my God, ved vade vaomra, and I'm confessing and I'm saying, Ana Hashem akel agadol. So please, Hashem, the, the big the big uh, God, agadol vanora, shomer abrid vachesed lo avav ule shomer mitzvotav. You that keep the covenant to ones that love you and 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 fulfill your commandments. We have sinned, we, we, we were wicked, we were evil, and we rebelled and we didn't fulfill your commandments and your laws, and we didn't listen to the prophets that spoke in your name. El Malkenu Vesarenu Bavotenu Bel Kol Am Israel that spoke in your name to all of us. Which means Hashem, he says, to you Hashem is the righteousness and to us is the shamefulness, he says over here. So you see over here that Daniel is, is not only accepting a fast on himself, but he's doing a vidui, he's confessing. And, and by accepting the mitzvah upon himself immediately, a, an angel is, a next, an, is next to him and he tells him, from the moment you accepted, you understood the truth beyond the falseness, you see the truth, you confessed over the truth. At that moment, I was created. The angel that came to him, which was the angel Gab Gabriel. So we see that when we accept upon ourselves a mitzvah, we create an angel. So now we'll go to Parashat Vayigash. And at the beginning of Parashat Vayigash, it's written, Vayigash al Yehuda, Vayomer bi Adoni, Deber Navdecha. So Yehuda goes, he is as the head of the tribes, he goes and speaks to, uh, he approaches Yosef and he speaks to him and he tells him that, uh, that he told his father that he's going to take care of Benjamin, of Benjamin. He has to bring him back. And then he said, and he says, I cannot go back because my father will die if I won't bring Benjamin. And this is, all of this uh, conversation is between Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. This is a conversation between Mashiach ben Yosef 
and Mashiach ben David. Yehuda, Yehuda, which from him comes Mashiach ben David, and Yosef, which means from him comes Mashiach ben Yosef. And the, the whole purpose over here, the whole dialogue is about uh, what's, more, uh, what's more important in the eyes of Hashem, the righteous person or the person who's, who repents, who, who gets a higher level spiritually. So, because um, Mashiach ben David is, is connected to Yehuda, it comes from Yehuda, it's the offsprings of Yehuda. And we know that Yehuda did tshuva, and when Tamar was uh, supposed to be burnt because she was pregnant, and she tells him, I'm pregnant from the person who all of this is his, which means his stick, his ring, and everything, this, the one that, uh, that, that is the owner of this, I'm pregnant from him. And he, in front of all of the court of the Sanhedrin, he said, and he was the head of the Sanhedrin, he said, Tzadka Mimeni, she's right, she, she got pregnant from me. Without thinking about his honor, without, he was thinking about Hashem and clinging to the truth, which is the, the seal of Hashem. And he was thinking about the world to come. It's better to be shamed in this world than Chas Shalom to be judged in the world to come. So this is Yehuda, and we know King David, it says about King David that with Bathsheba, that, he, that this, first we need, we need to remember that Bathsheba was his soulmate from the beginning of King David. She was, she, Hashem gave Uriah Chiti Bathsheba because Uriah Chiti was the servant of Goliath, of Goliath, and when King and when King David uh, killed him with the stones, uh, when he threw a stone on his forehead, then he wanted to take the sword to take off his head, and in order to do that, he couldn't. He didn't know how to open the sack of the sword, and Uriah was the servant of Goliath, so he asked him and he told him, "If you'll help me, I will give you. I'll let you. Um, um, I'll give you a woman, a Jewish woman, to marry." So Hashem said, "You would want to give him a Jewish woman? I'm going to give you. I'm going to give him your wife." So we know that. Uh, even though it looks like a sin, King David did not sin, and, and she was divorced, and King David w did not sin, uh, but he showed the way of repenting to the children of Israel in order that even if a private person sins, individual sins, he knows, like King David repented and Hashem accepted his repentance, so also us. Hashem will accept about this says Yirmiyahu the prophet he says a beautiful thing chapter 2 verse 35 it says over there Hineni nishpat otach. Hashem says I'm judging you al amarech lo chatati because he said that I, you didn't sin on this says Bemishlei King Solomon which means he who sinned and, and doesn't confess over his sins and doesn't say okay I have sinned I rebelled I did something wrong and he doesn't confess over this and he said I didn't do anything he won't succeed because Hashem is going to punish him all of the destructive angels that he created will be even with him Hashem will let them a permission will give them a permission to be even with him but but he who confesses and in front of because it's like Daniel the prophet and he was so righteous like he confesses I have sinned I've, I've, I've been wicked I've been evil I did A, B, C he speaks for the children of Israel for the whole children of Israel we didn't all of us listen to your commandments. We didn't, we didn't follow all of your laws. So he confesses for the children of Israel. So we see over here because we know that there's an eye that sees, an ear that listens, and all of our actions are written in a book. Hashem knows everything. Nothing is concealed from Hashem. Yirmiyahu the prophet says, in the name of Hashem, I am Isater Ish Misterim Vanilo Erenu. Can somebody hide and, and I won't see him, says Hashem? Hashem sees everything. Furthermore, the soul is from Hashem. This, the livelihood that we have inside us that holds, that carries our body is from Hashem. So it's, 
and we are just fooling ourselves thinking that Hashem, that nobody sees. Of course Hashem sees everything. Hashem sees everything and we are going to be judged over everything. It's only because of the mercy of Hashem that He has such mercy that He gives us another chance and another chance every morning. He wakes us up in the morning in order to, in order to do tshuva, to repent. So it's His mercy that, uh, that helps us. So we see over here, and for example, I will give you now from the parasha, after they are speaking, and, they, and so um, Yehuda is a symbol of repenting, of a person who does tshuva. And Yosef is a symbol of tzaddik, of a righteous, because tzaddik yesod olam is Yosef, because he didn't, he, he didn't have intimate relationship that is forbidden. So he's considered a tzaddik. So there's a big co a, a conversation between both of them. This is the conversation that is behind what we what we read uh, in the Torah, that is hidden in what we are reading. So and, and eventually, Yosef a tzaddik is revealed to them. But I want to go through the process of revealing, and from there we're going to learn uh, how do we need to behave today because it's very shameful what we see all all around the world and it all of this is happening from, from one character trait that from this comes all of the good character traits or or vice versa all of the not good character traits but first of all and Yosef tells to his brothers that he is Yosef Ani Yosef Haoda Bicha is my father still alive and they couldn't answer him they were afraid of him. They were in shock. Can you imagine when Hashem is going to reveal Himself and He will say, "Ani Hashem, Anochi Hashem Elokecha"? How we are all we we all are going to be shocked? So it says of the "Kinivalu Mipanav." So we are we are continuing. And how did He? How he, how he was revealed to them so he told them to make a lot a lottery and he said I, because the uh, Yehuda told him that they don't know where the brother Yosef is so he said make a lottery maybe he's here and he was shouting Yosef, Yosef so they made a lottery and he tells them search in what country, in what country he is so they made, made a lot and it, and it fell on Egypt then he, tell, he tells them, okay, so now search in what city it is. They made a lot, and it's in the city that they're in. Then he says, again, a, a, a draw a lot and see in what neighborhood Yosef is. And they draw a lot, and it's in this neighborhood that they're in. And then he says, this is from Kisera Hamim. And then he says, okay, do a lot and, and see... Uh, in what ho house is Yosef in? And they make a lot, and they see that he's in the palace. In this, he's in the house that they're in, the, exactly the house that they're in. And he says, okay, make a lot and see who it is. And it falls on Yosef. Just like a, with your another prophet, you remember your another prophet, he was in the ship and all the sailors after there was a big storm and they see that all of the ocean around them is calm. Only around them there's a storm that is going to break the, sh the ship. And they, and, they, and they throw a lot. And they throw a lot until they come to Yona and the captain goes to him and he says, all of this is happening and you are sleeping? Wake up, wake up. Which means wake up to do tshuva. All of this is happening around us and we didn't wake up yet? So they see it's, it's him, and then they, they look at him, and they see that he looks just like his father, Yaakov, just like their father. It, it says, And they were astonished, how didn't we recognize him before? And they, they were afraid, and that they couldn't speak, they couldn't say a word. Can you imagine? So, and he is calming them down. And, and remember that Yehuda tells him, So he tells him, For how can I go up to my father if the youth is not with me? Is not with me 
it means that how can we stand in front of Hashem in the court of heaven or stand in front of Hashem now that we are all alive yet and we are standing in front of Hashem and when our children do not follow the, the Torah and the commandments of the Jewish people that they don't even know why we are so hated who are we? So now we'll go Bezat Hashem and see. So this is our main purpose. People that don't know their past do not have a present or a future. And furthermore, people who make lies of their past and they didn't exist before and they're just making up themselves just like they didn't exist. They won't exist. It's the same thing. So Besiat Adishmaya you see over here that Yosef, now Yosef is taking his brothers and his father and they are in Goshen. And meanwhile, everybody comes to Yosef in order to be provided with food because there's hunger. And, the, and Yosef gives them food because eventually they don't even have money to pay. So he buys for Pharaoh the land of the people, except from the priests the Egyptian priests and from here we're going to learn something so let's see what happens with the Egyptian priests so Yosef Yosef didn't buy the the land of the Egyptian priests and why that we should God forbid not be ungrateful always we should be grateful that you always be grateful to the to the messenger that Hashem sent you in order to, to bring for you good things to bestow upon you good things even if it's good words if it's uh, money if it's uh, to, to put you uh, to, uh, to find for your job anything that a person can do to you if he gave you bread and water on his table in his home just like Yosef did, we are much learning from Yosef, to the priests that, uh, that, um, that, uh, that uh, um, did a good deed for him. What did they do for him? So we're going back to uh, when Yosef came back from the fields and he w went into Potiphar's home and his wife, of, the po wife of Potiphar, uh, she she desired him and she tried to persuade him to be with her and everything that she told him eventually said you know she says nobody will know if you'll be with me he told her but Hashem will know God will know again there's an eye that sees an ear that listens and all of our actions are written in the book I respect I, I respect he says I can't do this to, uh, to, uh, to Potifera, he gave me everything to control, everything that he has in his home, and you're his wife. And then she said, does nobody will know about it? She sa he says, no, God will know about it. So then he runs away from her, and she holds his, uh, his garment, and it's, it's its seat, and part of it is torn. She has it in her hand, and she says that he tried to rape her. That this slave, look, you you put him as a, 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 a on top of all of your possessions and everything, and look how he uh, pays for you. He's ungrateful, and he tries to sleep with me. That's what she tells uh, tells her husband Potiphar. So now, the priests uh, were supposed to decide if he will be executed, if Yosef will be executed. So they said, let's see from where the, the, uh, the part of the garment was torn. If it was from the, uh, at the front, it means that he really came, he wanted to do something with her. But if it's from the behind, the back of, of the garment, it means that he tried to run away from her. So they told her to show them, and then they saw this is from the behind. He tried to run away from her, so he doesn't de deserve to be executed. So, but, so she started shouting. She was shouting and saying, Gewalt, what's going on here? She said, oh, you have to punish him. He came, look, I have on my clothes, I have his sperm. What did she do? She took an egg and she took the uh, white part of an egg and she put it on, on her clothes like, like it's his sperm. So the priests said, we're going to check it with fire. 
if it's sperm, it's going to melt. It's going to melt like shava, um, like wax. But if it's uh, uh, the white of an egg, it will be hard. It will come hard like an egg. When you start cooking an egg, it becomes hard. <laughs> so they made this and they came to the conclusion that he didn't touch it, didn't do anything. She is the wicked one. But she was shouting and Potiphera from the shame threw um, Yosef into the, into, into, the, into the dungeon, the Egyptian jail. So, and she gave the shilton, so now that Yosef became the right hand of Pharaoh, he did not forget the, the, uh, the goodness that they showed towards him. And now he showed goodness towards them and he didn't take from the money in order to feed them because everybody that came to, to take food from uh, Yosef, he took money and gave it to Pharaoh, but not from the, not from the priests. And furthermore, he didn't buy their lands. They always received the food without paying anything for this. So we see over here, dear ladies, the, the virtue of a karata tov. So now I'm going to tell you it's, we're going to learn about a karata tov. And why am I saying this? Because all humanity needs to learn, the children of Israel and all of humanity need to learn what is a um, gratitude because we can see that Hashem gave us the schut, the merit to bring so many inventions to the world to make the world better we always the Jewish people if there's trouble in any country we always go to help we do we 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 have a devotion for all of our brothers and sisters outside the land of Israel even the Palestinians Every time there's a, a boy that is sick, somebody, someone that is sick over there, we take them to our hospitals in order to treat them. Even the head of the Hamas, he had, he had a cancer in his head and we treated him. And this is his thank you. This is his ungratefulness, him and his people, to all of the goodness that was bestowed upon them from the children of Israel. So we all need to learn how to be grateful for everything that we get because eventually Hashem, Hashem is the creator. He is the ruler of the world. Everybody pays for what they do. Hashem is just waiting and waiting to see if we repent every day that we wake up. So let's go to, um, to Peleo Eitz, but before we'll go over there, I would like to go to Mesilat Yesharim of the Ramchal. And over there, I would like to just to point out what he says, that the, the fate of the world depends on the deeds of human beings. Which means the fate of this world, if there will be World War Three or not, if there will be peace upon world, depends on our actions. So it says... You will know that the world was created in order to serve, to serve man. And why? Because we know that Hashem, it's in Bereshit Rabba, Hashem says, um, Hashem says to Adam, He tells him, So Hashem took Adam and he brought him to uh, um, paradise and he garden of Eden and he tells him look at all of the beautiful fruits look at all of the trees that are in the garden of Eden look at my uh, at all my deeds how beautiful and praiseworthy they are and then he tells him everything that I've created says Hashem to Adam is for you Adam and Eve and all of their descendants until now, until the end of days, all of the descendants. So he says, take, uh, take to your heart that you shouldn't corrupt my world, that you shouldn't ruin my world. So by this, says Aramchal, he says over here, B'msilat Yesharim, um, that all of the world, the fate of the world depends on humanity, on the deeds of humanity. 
which means by this we know that Hashem uh, appreciates life. Hashem doesn't want any death. Hashem wants life. The evil inclination wants death. It depends who you worship. If you worship Hashem or you worship the other side. So it's written over here, Ki'im, Ki'im adam nimshak achar haolam umitrachek mi boro. So if a person is drawn towards this world, physical world, and distance himself from the Creator, from Hashem, he neo mitkalkel umekalkel haolam kulo. So he will become corrupted, and he corrupts all of the world with him. Ve'im u'sholet be'atzmo, and if we rule ourselves, sholet be'atzmo, ve'nidbak be'bo'o, and cleaves to Hashem, u'mishtamesh min ha'olam, rak liot lo l'siu al ha'avodat bo'o, and he uses everything that is in this world in order to aid him when he's serving Hashem, when he serves God, so he will be elevated and also the whole world is uplifted with him. That's the words of, 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 uh, of the Ramchal. So the whole world, the fate of the whole world depends on humanity. The path that we choose, if we choose to follow the way of Hashem, and we use everything that is in this world in order to fulfill the will of Hashem, to follow His laws, to follow His commandments, to do good deeds to each other, give good words to each other. This is following His ways. We uplift, we, we are elevated, and we also uplift the whole world. But God forbid if we don't, and we do exactly the opposite, and we seek evil, and we cling into uh, to evil, we corrupt ourselves, and chas v'shalom, also the whole world. So now let's go to Peleo Eitz, and it says in Peleo Eitz, uh, he goes to Mishleid, King Solomon, and he says, Meshibra atachatova lo tamushra mi beto, which means, he who repays evil, he repays a uh, good with evil, then evil will not go out of his home. Can you imagine? And it says that V'chiyuva Ramiya ala adam shekibel kol dehu tova mechavero And this is an obligation for every human being that received any uh, goodness from any uh, from his friends. Shetehecha kuka belibo tamid kol ayamim shelo igmol imlo shum ra'a which means that the goodness that, for example, somebody invited you to his home, you were sitting in his home, you, he gave you food and water, you should even respect him more than your father and mother. Because your father and mother brought you to this world, so they will provide for you. But he doesn't have to provide for you. And he, if he did, you have to have respect. Because you, if you don't respect the messenger, you do not respect uh, the one that sent him, which is God. No, there's no human being and no creature that will do something in this world unless it was decreed in heaven. So first, there's a decree in heaven. So it's written, so we need to, to, to always be grateful to, to, for all of the good things that Hashem sent good messengers to do towards us. And the one that gave us, uh, that gave us, uh, did for us good things, we should always pay him with, with, with good things, with good deeds. Even if after that he did something that wasn't good towards us, the thing that he didn't do good for us, we should forget. But the, the good things that he did for us, we should never forget. Okay, from this we are going to Tomer Dvora. And in Tomer Dvora, it's the eighth attribute of Hashem that Micha, the prophet, received. And over there, it's Ichvosh Abonotenu. That Hashem suppresses our, in, 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 uh, our sins, our iniquities. So it's written over there, Betomer Dvora, Ve'ach mida zot tzarich ha'adam litnaig bash, which means, why? Because Hashem is waiting for our tshuva. Lo idach menu nidach. What Hashem wants, Hashem loves humanity. Hashem loves His creation. Hashem wants us to repent. 
to have to be to have peace among each other to love each other so Hashem wants a, a tshuva so this measure this attribute that Hashem suppresses our iniquities a person should also conduct himself according to this attribute so that he shouldn't suppress his fellow's favor and remember the evil or the harm that he has done to him. But he should remember the favor that he did for him. Which means, on the contrary, on the contrary, that he should suppress the evil and... And, and, and say, okay, if he did something to me that uh, that uh, hurt me, remember that this is a messenger from Hashem. Now he's coming. He did good for me before. He's making tshuva. I am going to accept him, and I'm not going to remember that. I'll move it aside. I'll suppress the harm that he made for me, and I'm going to do peace with him. And always the favor should be constantly arranged in front of us. And we should always remember the favor that he did for us. And by this, this uh, favor it, uh, needs to prevail over all of the other actions. And we shouldn't say in our heart, that if he did something good to me, but he also did something that wasn't good to me. And he will forget the goodness. He shouldn't do that. But uh, we should suppress the evil that he did. Once he does tshuva towards us, uh, we should suppress the evil in every, any way that we can. And we and the favor that he did we shouldn't uh, we should remember this all of our lives and put it in front of us so we should turn a blind eye to the harm as much as possible just like hashem does with this attribute that he suppresses all of our all of our sins which means he gives us time also to repent by suppressing our sins. So we see by this that this is a tchuna shel, this is a, an attribute of Hashem, and and it's appropriate that a person will emulate his Creator. How do we emulate our Creator? By emulating his attributes. So we see that Yosef Tzadik did not forget the goodness of the priests. When they come, because they could have, you know, do Shele Bele and, and, and decide that that's it, let's execute him because the, the wife of Potiphar, and he was a big minister in, in Pharaoh's, uh, um, in, in Pharaoh's uh, castle. So we could, he could, they could have done this, but they didn't. They, were, they checked and they found him not guilty. So he didn't forget the, the favor that they, he did, that they did with him. But then you see that in, in Chumash Mot, that the Pharaoh that comes after this Pharaoh, some say it was a different Pharaoh, some, I won't speak about it now, some say it was the same Pharaoh, that they caused him to, uh, uh, to uh, put a blind eye from all of the goodness that Yosef and Yaakov, that Yosef and Tzadik and Yaakov Avinu, our forefather, did for the Egyptians and the whole world when they came to Egypt. So, over there, he slaves the children of Israel, and he does not, it's like he forgot all of the goodness that he received from the children of Israel. And you see, history repeats itself. And, and we see over here, and, and, and because of this, Hashem gave them the plague of darkness. And why the plague of darkness? Because darkness in Hebrew is choshech. So, and the Chida says a beautiful, a, Think about this. Uh, the Chida says Lemakat, uh, that what is the time? What is the reason for Makat Choshech for the plague of darkness? Shebal Mitzrayim that came on Egypt, Kevan, and this was a darkness with thickness. They couldn't. Uh, uh, if you were standing, you, you stayed standing because it was so terrifying that you couldn't move. 
they couldn't see each other they couldn't move this was a um, it's not the darkness that we see at night it was a darkness with thickness mamash so he says the Chida, Kevan Shamitzrim Shrechu et Atovot Shas Am Yisrael Asulaim, because the Egyptians forget, forgot all of the the favors, the goodness that was bestowed upon them by the children of Israel, which means Yosef that provided the Egyptians when there was hunger and all of the nations that came to them and it, and they paid money and it came to the uh, the castle, uh, the court of a uh, of a uh, pharaoh. And that Yaakov Avinu, once he came, the Nile, the water of, of, of the Nile uh, went up and, and there was an abundance of blessings because of the children of Israel that were in Egypt and everywhere the children of Israel are in, in any country, there's a blessing in that country. Everywhere they go, everywhere that the children of Israel are in that country, there's a blessing bestowed upon that country. So we see over here that the Chida said, because they forgot, they, they put a blind eye to all of the favors and the goodness that was bestowed upon them because of the children of Israel. Because of this, Hashem made measure for measure. Measure for measure. And because of this, the eyes were deemed. And the makot choshech in a plague of darkness, but and and why? Because the chida says, okay, choshech, darkness is, in Hebrew is choshech. Choshech is the letters of shachach, of forgetness, exactly the same letters, and it's exactly the same letters of kichesh to deny that you denying the favor that you received from a certain person. And when you deny the favor, when you, uh, when you, when you uh, don't regard the favor that you, uh, you receive from a, uh, receive from a person, which means you don't regard Chas Shalom Hashem, God forbid, Hash, the Creator, God. Why? Because God sends a messenger in order to uh, to, uh, to get a, in order that that person will do a favor to you or Chas Shalom, God forbid, a harm. But if you don't remember, if you see the messenger and you don't remember, and you don't remember who sent him to you, and you deny the goodness that you received from that person, then you are worshiping other gods. And by, but why? Because you have pride, arrogance. So, the root of all goodness is gratitude, and the root of all evil is ungratefulness. Why? Because gratitude comes from humbleness, that we know that we are only passing through this world and we came to this world in, to do, in order to do a fixing between us and other human beings and, 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 and to follow a Hashem's way, His laws and His commandments. And by being humble and understanding where your place is and why you came to this world, then you are grateful for everything. You are grateful with your eyes, you look, uh, you look uh, in, in a good, uh, with a good eye toward others, and you're grateful with your mouth, you give good words, kind words, you give a smile with your face to other people, you use your hands to help others, to follow the, the laws, the commandments of Hashem, you use your legs to take you, to take the body to places so you can help sick people, you can help others, you can have a, a color, a bride, to do good things with, with all of the organs of your body in order to cleave to Hashem, to cling to Hashem. That's our purpose, because the whole world stands on humanity, on the deeds of humanity. Hashem created us like this in order that, that we will use each organ that we have in order to follow the way of Hashem with happiness. This is why we are here. So we continue that this uh, favor that, uh, that a person does towards us, we should remember and repay him with, uh, with good things. We can go to the, to the Gemara, uh, to, to the Mish, uh, Mishnah, uh, and in the Mishnah it says, uh, It says in chapter 6, Alacha uh, Gimel, the Breita Gimel. It says over there, Halomed Mechavo, Perek Echad, or Alacha Echad, or Pasuk Echad, or Dibur Echad, 
או אפילו אות אחת, צריך לנאום בו כבוד. So one who learns a single perek, and a single chapter, a single halacha, which means a commandment, chapter in the Torah, a, a, a single pasuk, a single verse, a single statement, We, you learn something, Some, somebody opened your eyes, he showed you something, and you learn from it. Anything that you, even a single letter of Torah from his friend must treat him with honor. This is Masechet Avot, in the Mishnah. צריך לנהוג בו כבוד, שכן מצינו בדוד מלך ישראל, because we found this in King David, and we see it in Yosef הצדיק. That the gratefulness that a person should have to a person who does a favor to him. So this favor, what was physical, that, that he wasn't executed, Yosef Tzadik wasn't executed and, and they could have killed him. And they showed that he was innocent. But I'll show you now King David. So this is physical, but we'll go to King David. And it said, Shekad Matzinu Medavid Melech Yisrael, we found... In a, 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 regarding King David, the king of his, uh, the Israelites, שלא למד מאחיתופל אלא שני דברים בלבד, that he learned only two things from מאחיתופל, that one was to learn together and to walk together when they're going to, to, uh, to learn. So two things he learned from מאחיתופל that went against him. And he called them, קראו, רבו, אלופום יודאו. And he called them rabbi, leader, and teacher. And he learned only two things, and he was the king of the Israelites. Shneemar, v'ata enosh ker ki alufim yudai, because it says, you are a man on my level, you are my leader and my teacher. So, v'alo dvarim kal v'chomer, umad David ha-melech. So it's an obvious conclusion that If David Amelech, if King David, the, the king of the Israelites, שלא למד מאחיתופל אלא שני דברים בלבד, that learned from אחיתופל and only two things, called him, קראו רבו אלופו מיודאו, called him, my rabbi, my, my, my teacher, אז הלומד מחברו פרק אחד או הלכה אחת או פסוק אחד או דיבור אחד או אפילו אות אחת, על אחת כמה וכמה שצריך לנהוג בו כבוד. So a person who learns Even one letter, not only a parak, a chapter, a, a verse, a pasuk, one letter should treat the person that he learned from him with honor. With honor. Ve'en kavod el ha-Torah. Honor is earned only for Torah b'siyat ha-Dishma. So, dear ladies, we see over here that even this is at the, at the spiritual level with David HaMelech, and the, over here we see it's a physical level. that the priests of Egypt, because they, they, they judged truly uh, Yosef and found him not guilty, then Yosef paid them a favor because he remembered their favor and he gave them food without, he didn't ask payment from them, he gave them food, free food. And he also didn't buy their land because he always remembered their, the favor, that, the good deed that they did for him. So the root of all goodness is gratefulness and the root of all ungratefulness is uh, and the root of all evil is ungratefulness gratefulness comes from humbleness and ungratefulness comes from pride arrogance so uh, another I'll give you a few it, there's another uh, uh, for example a few examples but I'll give you Moshe Rabbeinu Moshe Rabbeinu, when Hashem told him to, uh, to go and, and uh, to do the, the plagues that are going to come upon the Egyptians, so he didn't hit with a stick the Nile. He gave it to Aaron a coin. And why did he give him to Aaron, his brother? Because he was saved by the Nile, because he was put in a teva, and he was saved by the Nile. So this is gratefulness to the water of the Nile. Can you imagine? At, to what level gratefulness comes? Furthermore, when uh, the, uh, uh, the, the earth, when, uh, when he had to hit the earth, he, he gave it to Aaron, 
Why? Because when he mentioned the name of Hashem, when he saw the Egyptian hitting the, the, the two Israelites, and he mentioned the name of Hashem, and he killed him by this, the, the earth covered the Egyptian, and because he was grateful, and this is earth and water, it's not human beings. Furthermore, if it's a human being, that we need to say, thank you. Thank you for all of the abundance of blessings that Hashem gave us through you, through you, the children of Israel. Because Hashem said that He's going to bless all of the nations through the Jewish people. And in any country that there's Jewish people, there's blessings in that country. Because that's the word of God. So we see Moshe Rabbeinu, and now, and furthermore, Moshe Rabbeinu, he didn't revenge the Midianim, the Midianite. The, he didn't revenge them. Why? Because when he ran away from Pharaoh, he went to Midian and over there. He, sh he was a shepherd of, of the livestock of, uh, of Itro that lived in Midian. And so we see Parashat Matot, in, in, the, in the portion of Matot, Hashem tells, tells Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu that he wants to revenge the Midianite. This is after, you remember, Parashat Balak, that um, Bil'am eventually tells Balak, Balak calls Bil'am uh, to curse and, and he bless, and Hashem makes him bless the children of Israel. At the end, he tells him, make tents with old women in the entrance and young ladies inside and put um, perfumes that, that cause lust, uh, physical lust. And, and, uh, and because of this, there's a plague and 24 and 24,000 uh, Israelites die because of this. And Hashem tells uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, we have to avenge this from the Midianites. And Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't avenge. He calls, he calls Pinchas, and he calls uh, uh, from each tribe a thousand uh, uh, men, uh, righteous men, and they go to war. And then he, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu and, and Elazar Kohen, they are the ones uh, that receive back all of the warriors. But he doesn't go and fight. Why? Because this, it says, Shelo nakam Moshe nikmat midian lefi shenit gadel benhem. Because he, he grew, uh, he, he was growing with them. He went over there and he was living with them. So this is gratefulness. We always have to remember, we'll, the action of our forefathers is a sign to us how to behave. And the sages say, he who opens his house for his friend and he sits him around the table and gave him something to eat, something to drink, even only water, he is obligated to respect him even more than, than his father and mother. And it's, it says, and it says that Eliyahu Navi, that he didn't, Eliyahu Navi and Elisha the prophet, Eliyahu the prophet and Elisha the prophet that was the student of, Eli, of Eliyahu the prophet, both of them did resurrection. But it says over here, they didn't resurrect their own family, their own fathers. Whom did they resurrect? So we see Eliyahu Navi, he resurrected the son of the Tzarfit. That was Yonah the prophet. He re Why? Because she gave him bread to eat. This is exactly what, what's written here, the, the halacha that is written. That he, he did not resurrect his own, his own family, but he's a re he resurrected the, the son of the Tzarfit because she gave him food to eat. She made him bread to eat. She made him a chala to eat. And Elisha the prophet, he didn't resurrect his uh, family, but he resurrected the, the son of the Shulamit. And why? Because she gave him food he, when he used to pass in her neighborhood. She made him a place to sleep and she gave and she saw that he will have food and water. And because of this, he resurrected her son, which was Habakkuk the prophet. Can you imagine? 
all of this for the pat lechem. Beim kol kach hayav lachzik tova lechavora al pat lechem. This is not that it's, they they taught them Torah. It's only physical. They gave them food to the Eliyahu the prophet and at Aishat Zarfit and to the um, Elisha the prophet. And we see if we need to hold a favor for our friends for a piece of bread that we get. Furthermore, if it was a, a, a bigger favor that he received from his friend. And furthermore, if, if the favor was in order to elevate our soul and to teach us Torah, furthermore, this is how we should be grateful. That he showed them the way of Hashem and he took him away from the way of evil. This is the... the, the top of, of a favor that a, a, a one person can do to, the, to another person. Why? Because not only he gains this world, but he also, he, he, by, uh, by elevating his soul and, open the, and opening the path to another person uh, to, to cleave to Hashem, to cleave to God and to follow his way and his laws, by this we give that person and all of the, his and all of the generations that come after him, we give them a part in the world to come. Not only this world, the abundance of blessings in this world, but also the world to come. So there's no higher level than, than this favor. So if we learn Torah from someone, we learn the Pasuk, we learn something, we have to treat him with respect because this gives us the, not only this world, but the world to come. And King Solomon says, uh, and, and it's written, And if he won't honor him like he deserved to be honored, there's no ungratefulness bigger than this. So the King Solomon says in Mishlei chapter 17, verse 13, he says, That he, that if one, that he who repays a good with evil, evil will not go out of his home. So Be'ezat Hashem, I hope that... Um, and do you know why? Because uh, even in our, in our minds, if a person does a favor to us, so even as if you cling to the truth, of course you have to respect and say thank you. So I'm, we are concluding this with that, that the root of all um, uh, of all good in this world is gratefulness, and the root of all, of all evil in this world is ungratefulness. So I would like Bezat Hashem to bless all of us that we will all have this good to greet Mashiach Tzikana Barachamim Boim B'Ma'a B'Amen Amen Eliyahu Navi Zechur Latov L'Olam Yiparad Adam Mechavro B'Dvar Halacha Yechid V'Rabim Halacha K'Rabim Achenu Kol Bet Yisrael Anetonim B'Tzara U'Vashviya Ha'omdim Ben B'Yam U'Ben B'Yabasha Ha'makom Yirachem Alem Yotze Mitzara L'Rvacha U'Mafala L'Ora M'Shibud L'Gula Hashta B'Agla V'Zman K'Rib Y'Imru Amen